What's up, my final love? This is Miss Fina D coming to you all from Vienna Entertainment News. Corona. <laughs> it's no Corona. Dr. Dave, what are your tips for people with the not being able to go to work and isolation and hysteria and depression? Y'all look at his coffee stain. Just what happens when you stay at home when you quarantine? What's your What's your Well, you need to try to keep some contact. You know, whether it's if you're not getting out of the house, you need to be um, talking with people on the phone or uh, video chats or something like that. you got to have some contact so you're not just sitting at the house by yourself. That can be a big setup for depression and anxiety. Also, if you've got a lot of anxiety about what's going on, I mean, a lot of people are going to be stressed about it and be anxious about it. But if it's getting to the point where it's really affecting you and getting in the way of doing things that you need to do, constantly looking at the news, uh, fearing that you know the worst is going to happen with this, you know that you need to do some self-care things. Uh, try to look at, you know, maybe look at it in the morning, get an update of what's going on, but then don't look at it for the rest of the day. Don't sit there and refresh your your social media feeds and your your news feeds. Um, but sorry to interrupt you, babe. But what the hell else we gonna do if we quarantine to the house, stick and shut in? Watch something else on TV. <laughs> I don't care. Read a book, play a game. You can still go out for a walk. Just wave to the people across the street. <laughs> don't don't shake their head. Just wave. <laughs> Just wave like we waving right now. Wave <laughs> virtual wave. Hey, boo. Stay six feet or eight feet away, boo boo. <laughs> <laughs> it's paradise for me, y'all, because I'm actually an introvert. Nobody believes that, but I am. So I'm happy to be in isolation. <laughs> <laughs> y'all need to watch Mary to Miss. You damn right, Seth. That's right, Seth. <laughs> Seth, you better be my publicist, baby. <laughs> That's what y'all do. Watch Mary to Medicine. <laughs> Someone asked, my son has asthma and allergies. Should I keep him home from school? With asthma and allergies, oh, her asthma son. And allergies? Should she keep him home from school? Well, with asthma and allergies, you are going to be, uh, he's going to be a little more um, vulnerable to the virus. The good news in kids, the virus really doesn't seem to be uh, affecting them as much as it does in older adults, um, which is a little bit different than uh, other viruses like the flu because kids really... He's five years old. Kids Child, kids. I ain't no doctor. Keep that baby home. Yeah, I mean, but you, if you have a, a chronic <laughs> disease or a pre-existing condition, especially if it weakens your immune system, yeah, you're going to be more vulnerable to the virus and to uh, to the, the bad... Hey, baby tail stuff. clothing from the UK. Um, Hershey Kiss, that baby's five. Keep him home. They done closed all the schools into way. I, I, mean, I don't know where you are, but in Georgia, good. they already closed all the schools. If I had, when I have children, they would be going. I can tell you that. It's not worth the risk. It's just not. You know, I think that the risk to the children is really much lower. What the risk is... Well, they'll is carry it, bring it home, and get you sick. Home. Yeah. And particularly if you have um, older adults at home or people who have uh, or who are immunocompromised for whatever reason, you know, maybe receiving treatment for cancer or have another illness. Like lupus, that. like I do. Yeah, this like is why I've been staying home. Yeah, that will make you more vulnerable. And so I would I would probably be very reluctant to send a, a child to school if the schools are still open, if you've got someone like that at home because of the risk to that person. Uh, someone asked if, they, if they're they worried about going around their um, older relatives, like grandparents. They don't have symptoms, but they're concerned about going around them in case maybe they're a carrier. Yeah, I, I think that that's a legitimate concern. Uh, you know, many people who have this virus are going to have uh, minimal symptoms and may not even realize that they've got it. And you don't necessarily want to take it to somebody who uh, who it could really affect in a, in a bad way. Yeah, because I read that the coronavirus can survive on surfaces for like a day like a long time yeah it uh it, the surfaces and other things that you may touch where you may get the virus those things are called fomites and this particular virus can live on those for uh, much longer periods of time than say the flu virus or the cold virus and so it's very important that you are washing your hands if there are babe what's washing tell people like your version like scrub your ass in the so, surgery wash your hands yeah, so you need to be washing your hands for 20 seconds you know, sing the happy birthday song um 
a twinkle twinkle little star. Y'all need to act like y'all scrubbing in the surgery like you on Grey's Anatomy yeah. some damn where. And you gotta, you gotta <laughs> do it hard. You gotta get a lot of friction in there. That helps get the, the virus is off and the bacteria off. You make sure you clean it under your nails. Who uh, say that again, baby? Because they don't do that unless they... People don't clean under their nails unless they're at the nail shop. Yep. Say that again. Yeah, so you gotta <laughs> clean under your nails. You gotta you know, really make sure you're scrubbing. You know, get up on your arms a little bit. Uh, you want to use a, a paper towel to turn the water on and off. Give me that ball, Louie. And then if you're in a public restroom, if you're going in and out of the bathroom, you want to use a paper towel to open the door so you're not recontaminating your hands just as you've cleaned them and, and walking out the door. So I have OCPD, obsessive compulsive personality disorder, and people have been looking at me cray for years because I, you know, she cleans. <laughs> <laughs> so y'all need to start acting like me and scrubbing everything. You know, things like uh, doorknobs, you definitely want to wipe down countertops. Anything that you're going to touch regularly should be cleaned um, at least once a day. You know, wipe them down with something that uh, will have good antiviral activity, such as a, um, a, a Clorox wipe. Uh, there are other cleaners on the market, but you want to find somebody, something that has um, an alcohol content of at least 70%. So y'all stuff from Bed Bath & Beyond and from, what's that lotion store everybody loves I was talking smack about earlier? I can't oh, think of the name, but anyway, where it's like 70% glitter and 30% um, yeah, <laughs> sanitizer, so don't use those. Sanitizer, you want to make sure you get the ones that are 70% alcohol. Not 70% glitter. You know, many of them are, are 62, 68%, so you really want to make sure that you get that 70% because that's the number the way you're going to start to kill the viruses. Seth, baby, Seth says, Dr. P, are you not going to work currently because of this or do you have virtual visits? Has it affected your work and your practice? Very good question. Bath Body Work. You're right, Simply Jackie. Don't be using that sanitizer from Bath Body Work. Y'all better get that real stuff. Anyway, go ahead and answer Seth's very good question. So I'm doing both. I'm actually moving in the direction of making more kind of virtual visits available to my patients. Um, I'm asking anybody who's sick to not come into the office, but I am I'm willing to see them over a, um, I have a, a telehealth platform that I use and I can see people securely that way and it just makes sure that everybody stays safe but I don't want people to not go um, to go without I don't want them to go without their appointment yeah without treatment and uh, if they need it particularly at this time when a lot of people are having a lot more anxiety and things like that so so David is licensed in seven states in the Commonwealth of Puerto Rico and he's been in the telemedicine space for years now um, a very large percentage of his practice is telemedicine already so it's been for him rather easy to give his um, patients the option to either come into the office or see him virtually it's going to be difficult for some other medical professionals to to do that um in this environment but you know hopefully they'll figure it out right i mean psychiatry is is much easier just because you know we're talking we don't have to do physical exams and things like that for the most part it's a little bit harder for um internists and, and other medical specialties but, however that's getting better but, but many of them are doing it and yeah it, there are actually are some ways that they can get some basic vital signs and things like that and you know honestly if you have if you're having cold symptoms or flu symptoms or or symptoms that you think may be of the coronavirus if you're having cold symptoms or flu symptoms or or symptoms that you think may be of the coronavirus uh, if they're willing to set up an appointment virtually, you can at least ask some questions and they can give you further guidance about whether you should come in for testing or uh, get some other treatments in some other way. One big XOXO asks, what about restaurants? Should they avoid restaurants during this time? You know, that's kind of a hard question. Um, I think as long as the restaurant staff are... Wearing gloves, which a lot of them are now. And practicing good hand hygiene. Uh, and they're cleaning the tables, wiping the tables down, not just with the dirty rag they pulled off from behind the bar, but <laughs> something that actually has some uh, some uh, antiseptic cleaning solution on it. The um, shade. You know, I think it's it's fine. You obviously don't want to go somewhere where you're going to be sitting around a whole bunch of people in a very crowded area. That's going to be more risky, but... You know, you also have to think about kind of the economics of this. And people who work in restaurants... Get paid uh, daily. They get paid daily. And, and need the money. You know, they, yeah. They rely on tips. 
and you know it, yeah that's the other side of this that is so difficult to reconcile it's like a public health crisis but there are people who who need that money like you it's sad to see everyone do these runs on costco and sam's and all these stores and buy all these things up but then you got to think about it there are some people who don't have money that can do that Right. You know, they don't have enough money to store up food and paper products and hand sanitizers and soap for two to three to four weeks. And that's why it's so important that the government go ahead and pass this legislation and 45 sign into law. I know the House passed the legislation and we're waiting on the Senate to pass it. Um, and, you know, so we can get food out to people like, you know, there are going to be people who need food stamps who don't normally need food stamps you know, if they're not yeah, able to work. Expanding SNAP and, and WIC, I think, is going to be very important. You know, and I think one of the other things, a lot of the school systems, because so many food insecure families, mm -hmm. the children get their meals there. Their meal. Two times get, a day. You know, they get it two times a day, in some cases even three times a day, and that may be all they eat all the day. The whole day. And if they're not able to go to school for two weeks to a month or who... Indefinitely, or like some of these school districts are saying. I, I think a lot of the school districts, and, and they are, um, they're, they're bound by law to actually provide these meals, and so a lot of them are kind of trying to figure out how to do this, but it's not an easy... Uh, task from a logistics standpoint. We're probably going to do what they're doing in New Rochelle, New York, and the National Guard is going to step in and help yeah. in that capacity, and they so. should, because you don't want people going without food. All right, y'all. Well, we're going to go back to our lovely Lacey Saturday. Thank y'all for listening to the Purcells and Louie and Prada. Prada has left the building. She said we bore her, so that means we're probably boring y'all. <laughs> Talk to y'all soon. Hope you found this helpful. So there you have it. While other people are using their platform to tear people down, cuff <laughs> heavily, um, <laughs> Buffy and her husband are using their platform to spread positivity, love, laughter, and of course, provide information. Some of the information they provided, you know, you might call it simple, but I'm shocked that people are literally teaching people how to wash their hands. Like that's something that everyone should know how to do. But as you can see, uh, most people, you know, they don't wash their hands the right way. They don't clean the surface the right way. They don't use certain products and all of those things. So some of the information, the simple, and deep information that they both provided, you know, was necessary. And like I said, I'm glad that they're using the platform appropriately during this time. Anyways, I am wishing Buffy and her husband and their families the best. I'm wishing all of you the best. Continue to stay safe. The end of here, my friend, I love. Thank you all for your love and support. If you're not subscribed to the channel, Go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Go ahead and leave this video a thumbs up. Also, turn on notifications so when I do post, you're aware that I posted. And I will see you all in the comment section. Remember to always have the God bless attitude, which is being positive at all times and seeing the good in every situation. Have a great day, guys. God bless. You.